Guys, let me introduce you to my child. Come here, Ross. Ross. I'm obsessed with friends. <laughs> Watch what I taught him. Hey, Ross, Ross, sit. Sit. He usually does it. I'm just glad Noah got these guys on his arc. Sorry, dinosaurs. Do you guys know a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's? Come here. I honestly like the colder months because like the bugs go away. Ugh. Like I would never touch a bug. <laughs> okay, baby. Mommy's got your poop in a bag. Let's go. What's wrong? Ross! Ross! Help! Are you okay? He has really bad anxiety. I pay over hundred dollars a month for his medicine. Uh, um, what's God spelled backwards? <laughs> yeah, you think that's a coincidence? These things are angels. <laughs> Ross! No, no, Ross! Honestly, I'm jealous of his natural curls. Ross! <laughs> Ross! Look at his little bandana. <laughs> it was his half birthday present. <laughs> Taking forever to approve Ross as an emotional support dog. So annoying. I mean, I don't really need him, but like, he's my son. That photo's gonna look so good on Ross's Instagram. Yeah, at oodles of doodles. Okay, Ross, Ross. Mommy will get you a tall puppuccino if you go fetch that tall Latino. He's cute. Ross! Ross! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> sit, sit, shake. Shake. Now, find mommy a boyfriend. Ross! <laughs> <laughs> Ross! Oh, this isn't easy. Am I right, moms? <laughs> okay, I gotta get unsassy. I'm a grown, funny boy. Let's do this. It's just a bunch of people in a room. We're used to making videos by myself. That's fine. Okay. Uh, sure, please. Sure. Thank you. Okay, we got this first ever special. Let's go. Y'all give it up for Trey Kennedy! Thank you, Chicago. How we doing? Thank you. Wow. That y'all are amazing, man. Wow. Thank you. That is all white people. Okay. It's fine. Okay. No, we're good. Y'all, I'm excited to be here, man. I can't wait. We're taping the special. It's a special evening. I'm so excited to be here. I got a lot to get off my chest. I know. But before I, really, before I really get into the show, I like to get a feel for the audience first. I want to see who's out there. So make some noise tonight. Do we have any moms in the house tonight? Yeah, okay. A lot of moms who've barely left the house in a couple of years. <laughs> Got a lot of moms, a lot of moms. Uh, a lot of moms in the house. I want to know this. Do we have any like brand new moms? Brand new mothers. Do we? we I, heard, I heard a woo. Where are we at? Okay, over, I see you, ma'am. I see you. What's your name? What's your name? Sarah? Kara. So sorry. Tara. Yeah. It's basically the same thing, so. They're all so unique. Tara with the T. I'm so sorry, Tara. Thanks for being here. Brand new mom. How old's the little one? Six months old. I don't think anyone thinks you should be here, but that's fine. Okay, Tara. I gotta know. Did you do a gender reveal for the little one? Did you? Pop the balloon. Pop the balloon? Yeah. Heck of a party, Tara. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. Do less, God bless, Tara. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Thank you, Tara. Maybe we got a lot of moms. A lot of moms in the house. What else we got? Do we? Have, I heard. I heard someone shout this. We have some dog moms. Do we have okay. That's annoying. That is annoying. That's that with proud dog mom. I saw it right here, man. What, what kind of dog do you have? A yellow lab. Just couldn't afford a golden doodle. It's kind of like... 
kind of the Walmart version of it, so. That's okay, they're very expensive. They are, I mean, you see these, these like luxury branded dogs, right? I feel like anywhere I turn, it's one of those. Golden Doodle, Labradoodle, Scoodle Doodle. You know what I mean? I don't know where they have all these poodles chained up, just pumping out dogs. When's the last time you saw a poodle? Where are they? It's a problem. <laughs> Hashtag free the poodles. Free the poodles. I feel like girls everywhere are like, we love dogs, and the pound is like, we have a bunch for free. You can just take several. Like, that's not gonna look good on my Instagram. That's not. I'd rather take out a loan than take that home, whatever that is. I just, now the dog, I gotta be honest with y'all, I'm not a, not a big dog guy. Don't really like the dogs, I don't. Okay, well, uh, I feel very brave admitting that. Any, anytime I say I don't like dogs, a white girl pops out of a bush. What did you say? What was that? What'd you say? Say it to us, say it to Winston's face, I dare you. We don't deserve dogs. That's what they say. <laughs> no, I think if you got the dog, you, you do you, do the dog thing. Where I gotta speak up. This whole, this whole trend of calling yourself a dog mom. You know, I don't, I don't know if you've earned the title of mom and you compare it to like a human mom. <laughs> the most my mom would do, she give me an affectionate kiss on the cheek. You dog moms are at home making out with your fur babies. <laughs> I love it. My mom didn't do that to me. <laughs> it's weird mom behavior. You dog moms keep your child locked in a cage all day when you go to work? Yeah. My mom only did that when I did something wrong. So. Human mom, how about this? Human moms, they feed their children with their bodies. Right? Beautiful thing, nature. I feel like all the dog moms in the room are like, well, we would if we could. <laughs> we would if we could. I'd do anything to be like, Winston, come here. Dinner's ready. <laughs> you have been a good boy. Come to mom. I'm at the age where uh, you know, a, lot of my, a lot of my good friends have coupled up, got married and stuff. I know of several couples where she's the dog mom, she, you know, she's got the dog, obsessed with the dog, but he is allergic to dogs. <laughs> I was talking to one of these couples recently, I was like, how's married life? That's too bad, you can't do the dog thing because he's allergic. She was like, nope we do, he just takes a lot of Zyrtec. <laughs> I was like, poor guy. <laughs> How did that conversation go between the two of them? He's like, really, babe? You want me to take a daily pill for the benefit of both of us? <laughs> yeah, I'll pop my pill if you pop yours, Benadryl boy. How about that? Mm, you'll take your dime tap if you want to dime tap this. You understand me? Winston's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not a dog guy, I'm lucky. My wife, she's not a dog person either. I got married in 2020, just a couple years ago. It was great. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Great year to get married, I recommend. Yeah. Beautiful year. Still married, by the way. It's going fine. Yeah. You never know, but I've learned a lot already. A couple years of marriage, learned a lot. One of the things I've learned about is the five love languages. Anyone familiar with the? Yeah, people know this? You know, your, what's your love language, ma'am? Gifts, yeah, says the front row VIP, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> Buy me, thanks. Now I learned my love language is, uh, my love language is physical touch, but from my chiropractor, you know? <laughs> oh, if I had to pick one pair of hands, it'd be Dr. Simon's, <laughs> I'm falling apart. 
Everything hurts, y'all. I'm not even that old yet. It hurts, you know. I don't, I don't understand it. So you see some of these athletes, right? Ten years older than me, playing NBA basketball, pro professional sports. They'll, you see the injury reports. They'll be like, so-and-so, he'll probably play tonight. He's got a dislocated knee. <laughs> So if I was on the team, they'd be like, Trey can't show up tomorrow. He slept on his neck wrong. <laughs> I have high cholesterol already, sky high cholesterol. I, I, I was like, doctor, I'm too young for this. How do I fix this? He's like, son, it's easy. Just cut out all the beef, the cheese, the beer. I was like, can we just put the pacemaker in now? <laughs> These are all the things. But I have this friend of mine. Maybe I'll know someone like this. I have this friend. He's like, Trey, I, I, I hear you, all your issues. I know the solution. I know the one thing you need that'll cure all the problems in your life. CBD. <laughs> CBD. <laughs> if you don't know what CBD is, it's like if essential oils had a weird cousin that lived in a van. It's like decaf weed, I don't know. <laughs> Not sure what it is, but... People, they're, yeah, they're too big on this stuff, right? Uh, they, they try to convince me of it, right? They want me to take it. They think it's some miracle substance that solves anything that's ever been wrong with you. They're like, no, Trey, trust me, you gotta take CBD. Before I took CBD, I, I had acne. But before CBD, I didn't know how to pay my taxes. And now... <laughs> Before CBD, before CBD, believe it or not, I had one arm and CBD <laughs> regenerated my arm like a salamander. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it, man. Like CBD, the CBD started simple enough, right? And CBD oils and now there's a store on every street corner. How many products can they put the stuff in? How many products? Like, come try out our CBD pastries, CBD soda, we got CBD lotion, CBD dog treats. Because your dog has anxiety now. <laughs> you know, the more, the more I thought about it, maybe your dog does have anxiety with the way you mothers mother these creatures. <laughs> I don't know, like, I would have anxiety if my mom, every time she saw me walk through the door, went, <laughs> Anxiety? I would be in a straitjacket somewhere. Lost my mind. Calm down, are you kidding me? Like, he just pees when he's excited. It's scared to death, it's scared to death. No wonder it needs CBD, no wonder. No, but anxiety is real. That's, you know, my first run in with Real anxiety was that whole like marriage process. Fellas, you know what I'm talking about. For us, we have, to, we have to go through this whole sequence of events to even get to the wedding day. First step, you're supposed to ask her father for his blessing, right? So of course that's what I do. Fly down, meet with her dad. We're sitting there over dinner. I'm like, we've never talked without her around. <laughs> it's pretty awkward. <laughs> but I asked him, I'm like, I love your daughter. I wanna marry her, but you know, can I have your blessing first? He said, son, I like you, that sounds good. I just need to know a few things before I give it to you. I need you to promise me something. First things first, can you protect my daughter? Can you promise me you'll always protect my little girl? <laughs> like, sir, I've got 50 pounds on her. I'm scared of her sometimes. <laughs> I don't have this tough guy thing. I had to keep it real. I don't have it. I don't know if it's like a generational thing, what it is. Like, her father's that way. That's how my dad is. That's how he tried to raise me. You know, wipe some dirt on it, kid. You don't cry. <laughs> real men never cry. But he raised a guy that just the other night I bawled my eyes out watching five gay guys give a girl a makeover on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> She's gorgeous. <laughs> it's just different, you know, like... Like, my father was the type to end most of his nights with, like, a whiskey and a cigar. 
I end most of my evenings with a sleepy time tea in my Kindle. <laughs> my dad would be like, come on down, McGuire's on. He was talking Mark, I thought he was talking Lizzie. I was like, I was just listening to the soundtrack, father. Is she in Paris this time? Where is she? Father-son bonding. <laughs> it's different, man. I, I don't get the tough guy thing. I, didn't, I don't have it. You know, a while back, my wife, Katie, my wife Katie and I, a group of friends, we had this trip planned to Mexico. Very excited. Friend trip to Mexico. But immediately, Katie's mom, white mom, she's freaking out. Right? She's like, oh, don't go to Mexico. The cartel, they're chopping people's heads off. <laughs> Like, we're going to Sandals, not Juarez. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is spring break, not breaking bad. <laughs> she says to me, you know what she says? She looks me in my eyes, she goes, Trey, you know, that makes me nervous, but I feel more comfortable knowing you'll be there with my daughter to protect her. <laughs> I was like, I hate to break it to you, ma'am, but... Your daughter will have to console me on the Southwest flight there when it hits turbulence. <laughs> I don't think I'm fending off El Chapo anytime soon. <laughs> Protect, if anything, I'm a target, right? If we're really worried about the cartel busting in the resort looking to off somebody, they spot me in the shallow end with a farmer's tan and a fruity drink. To... She's a goner. She's... <laughs> but I think we're too hard on the cartel here in the States, actually. I, don't... <laughs> I do, because we have something very similar here in America, very similar to the cartel when you think about it. When, when you think of an organization, right, that, that recruits young people, they prey on the innocent. <laughs> Multi-level marketing companies. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about that tonight, y'all. MLMs, y'all got the big MLMs around here? What are they? Shout them out, shout them out. What are the MLMs? Arbon, Amway, the Row. Okay, we, okay, we got a lot of white girls in here, we got it. There's some, ladies, I know you know what I'm talking about. Ever since I got a following on social media, I get random messages from moms on Facebook, like, Trey, we have an amazing opportunity for you. You have the perfect personality for Rodan and Fields. What are you talking about? <laughs> Rodan and what? I, you know, this is, just, this is just such a big topic on my heart. I, I don't know how else to get it off my chest than through song. Can I sing y'all a song tonight? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank y'all. All right, this is a... Uh, this is a song I wrote about someone who, they join one of these MLMs and they, they try to get all their friends involved. And it's titled, Alone. They had an opportunity to be their own boss and make some money. Make their own hours, never have to leave home. This is the story of someone who wouldn't leave anyone alone. <laughs> They had initiative and personality Also a pretty warped sense of reality Plus who doesn't want to work for their best friend's mommy And that mommy said, you can do it But this is not a scheme to get rich quick This will take years and years to build Sounds to me like building a pyramid. <laughs> they asked everyone if they like to take part. Oil's essential, but I guess friends hard. You ran them off, peddling that product. Cosmetic Pablo Escobar. It's 
Not a pyramid scheme. It's called a multi level marketing company. We hate to break it to you, it's pretty much the same thing. But wait, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's called a multi level marketing company. Call it whatever you want, just stop freaking calling me. But wait, it's not a pyramid scheme. It's called a multi-level marketing company. That's like saying, dude, it's not a frat. I'm in a fraternity. Either way, you're They had an opportunity to be their own boss and make some money. Make your own hours, never change out of your PJs. Only one side effect, you'll be desperately lonely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we covered that topic pretty thoroughly, all right. Can move on. <laughs> a lot to still talk about. A lot of, lot of things make me ask, are you for real? A lot of things, especially online. There's a lot of people online, they irk me, you know. I don't, I don't know if anyone annoys me more on social media than the workout fitness guys, you know. Keeping us real updated with their, you know, their gym selfies, their pull-up videos. You know, posting status updates. 5 a.m. already crushed a workout. What have you accomplished? <laughs> I've accomplished not annoying everyone around me. <laughs> Go back to bed. That's what it is with these guys. It's just these weird, these weird like motivational, inspirational captions. They're like normal guys. I, I followed this guy on Instagram a month ago. He's just shirtless in his locker room with the caption, somebody's gotta bring home the bacon. I'll be the one to kill the pig. <laughs> what? You're a CPA, William. <laughs> Get your bacon at Costco, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> and these, these meathead guys, they're dying to let you know they still work out their legs. You see them flexing in the mirror, hiking their shorts up to here, just, just <laughs> Pull your shorts down. You are so pale. All their weird potions and powders they're taking, they try to spot it on us, you know. They're 10% off, swipe up, swipe up. 
Pros, I'm getting jacked. Cons, I think I'm starting to lactate, if I'm being honest. <laughs> All the doll moms are like, wait, how do you do that? You can do it, wait. <laughs> That's possible? I don't need the updates on the fitness stuff, right? They try to spin it on you, you know? They're like, don't mind me, I'm just posting for accountability. It's for attention, it's for attention. <laughs> the half marathon people. <laughs> bragging about doing half of a marathon. It's very dramatic, right? You see Sunday morning, like 13.1, I can't believe I did it. Oh, glory to God, I wanna thank my support group, my friends, my family, everyone who showed up, so shut up. 13.1, AKA someone's mom did that at Disneyland accidentally today. Not that impressive. <laughs> Celebrate stuff like half marathons, very clueless, especially the men. I've learned this since being in a relationship. It's all good, but uh, of course, Kate and I, we've been together, and uh, for the first time a while back, I'm left home alone. Home alone for the weekend. She returns home, first, this is a true story. First thing she does, she walks in the door, she's like, hey babe, I missed you. What's that smell? <laughs> you women and your noses, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like an idiot. She's like a bloodhound on a trail, throwing up couch cushions. <laughs> throwing open cabinets. Where is it? Where is it? She, I mean, immediately she finds it. Within three minutes, I, I've been there for three days, she finds, <laughs> she finds the culprit in the kitchen cabinet is a rotting bundle of asparagus. She looks at me, she's like, you're an idiot, are you an idiot? You don't refrigerate this? I was like, you bought that, that was a new food for me. I've never, <laughs> oh, I thought it was like your arts and crafts. I put, I don't know what, I was Googling what's asparagus. I've never heard of it before. <laughs> what is that? So dumb, so dumb. But fella, fellas, sometimes, I don't know what they realistically expect from us sometimes, you know? I, Katie, she, my wife, she always wants assistance with things. I don't think she realizes I can't help her with these things, I can't. You know, we're in this house together. We're trying to like furnish and decorate the house, you know? She always wants my help with this. She says this thing I've yet to really figure out. She's like, okay, babe, I think it's time. It's time we turn this house into a home. Yeah, I was like, oh my God. And she's, she wants my help with this. She's like, okay, babe, okay, the whole house, the whole house needs to have a theme, okay? The drapes need to match the spatulas and it's all gotta... You know, I'm like, I'm trying my best. I'll be like, uh, 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 okay, how about we hang up picture frame right here? <laughs> She's just like, what kind of idiot would think that would look good there? Are you an idiot? Take it down. <laughs> it's impossible, right? Because fellas, ladies do the certain thing to us. Ladies, you, you, you want our help, but not our opinion, right? It's very subtle. <laughs> Two different things. It's tricky. Tough, uh, you know. I try my best, you know. She wants my help matching drapes and spatulas. I'm like, if I look down right now, I'm, I'd be lucky if my socks match each other, but I'll try. In fact, the only thing I've ever matched successfully, I think, is you on Tinder, and that's how we're here. So I don't know what you want from me. I, I try to do my part, though. I'm trying to like uh, be a man of the house or something. If something like breaks, I'm like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like YouTube and this or that. A while back I was up under one of our sinks, you know, working on something. <laughs> she comes in, she starts letting me have it, right? You picture, she's like, hey babe, how is it? Are you sure you know what you're doing? Hey, don't hurt your, don't break it. Should I call someone? Should I call my dad? Should my daddy get over here to you do it, right? <laughs> and finally I had enough, finally I had enough. You know, what, you know what I said to her? I said, you know what, babe? I think I need a little less of your opinion and more of your help. And 
that's the story of how I was force-fed rotten asparagus for dinner. So. <laughs> Bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> That's how a lot of couples meet these days, right? A lot on the apps and everything. Do we have, do we have any like internet app couples in the house? Oh, we got a, oh, we got a, uh, oh, I saw you, ma'am. Yeah, what's your name, ma'am? I saw you. What's your name? Amanda, who are you here with tonight? Husband Alan. Good to see y'all. And how'd you meet? OK Cupid. Yeah, I agree, ma'am. What the heck is that? OK, what? How long have you been together? How long have you been together? Eight years. Give it up for OK Cupid. We love it. Whatever it is, we love it. Thank you, OK Cupid. All right. It really works. Good for y'all. It really works, uh, these internet apps and stuff. But I feel like at the same time, it, it really complicates dating, right? It feels very overwhelming. How many apps are there? You know, Tinder, Bumble. I learned about a new one just now. Uh, what are the other big apps? What am I missing? Look. Hinge, right? Bump, yeah, Bumble, yeah. Farmers Only, very funny, yeah. <laughs> Black people meet. Not at my shows, probably. But, uh, white people meet. There's no white people meet, is there? Oh, there's Whole Foods. That's kind of the same. You know, it's a lot of options, is all I'm saying. And, uh, it, it's, it's very overwhelming. Back when I was dating, I was on all, I was on everything. I was trying to find the one. I was hanging out, hanging out with my grandpa one night. I was asking his advice because my grandpa married to my grandma 60 plus years. <laughs> You'll see that a lot, you know? So I was like, grandpa, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to find it, trying to find her, but it, it's never been more complicated today than it is today. Never been harder. He said, well, son, I wouldn't speak so fast. Back in my day, I was dating your grandma. I got drafted to war, and I could only write her once a month. I was like, okay, pop on. <laughs> I'll have you know, I dropped in with my Fortnite squad for like 12 hours the other day. I, I couldn't text her back at all, so. At least I won my war, you know. It's... So. <laughs> He was like, son, no, back then, we're, times were tough. We're coming off the depression. We didn't have much. All we could afford uh, for our first date, your grandma had me over. She cooked for me. She had me at hello. Aww. I was like, well, my girl can't cook. She better have me at hello fresh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. It's not easy. 60 plus years, I want that. I think we all want that. He's like, son, if you just do this, It'll solve a lot of your problems. So you just gotta make sure you have commitment, balance, and dedication. It's like, oh great, CBD really is the cure to everything. <laughs> I was afraid of that. <laughs> no, when my grandparents, when they, when they had their 60th wedding anniversary, we threw a big party, big celebration, worthy of a celebration if you ask me. I think a lot of folks these days were we're overdoing the celebration. Your grandparents' 60th, I'll be there. Your third child's second birthday party, I'm not showing up to that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Come over this Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. Little Brexton just turned 24 months old. He loves animals, so he rented a goat. It's tied to the fence post. You could be, no, no. Stop. I mean, we gotta cut out some of these events. How many, y'all, how many weddings do you have to go to? Bachelorette parties, bridal showers, baby showers, gender reveal parties, Tara. It's too many. <laughs> we gotta cut back on some of these, man. If you can't even re remember your birthday party or you get past a certain age, we're done with the birthday parties. We can't, you know, I I'm doing my part. You know, I turned 29 recently. No, no one cares. Yeah, me neither. My birthday's become a burden to me. It's a burden to me. Fellas, you know what I'm talking about? The women in my life, my wife, my mother, my sister, they're like, Trey, your birthday's coming up. Be thinking about where you want to go, what you want to do, so you feel special and loved and cared for. I would like to be left alone. 
stop texting me. <laughs> Just not an option with them. Next thing you know, I'm at a birthday party for me with a group of people singing me happy birthday. Is there a more awkward position in the universe than sitting there as people sing you happy birthday? You feel like you're a red light next to a homeless person. You don't know where to look. Make it stop. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm lucky to have the women I do in my life. Very lucky, you know. Do we have any Karens in the house? <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh, okay, we got, must have been a hard year for you. Hey, uh, hey no, hey. Not everything's, not everything's a joke. Okay, hey, okay, easy, ma'am. I, I didn't. I said, your name is Karen. I didn't call you a Karen. Hey, so. seriously, as treasurer of the Homeowners Association, I will cut down on you. It's not, <laughs> don't be laughing. Why Thanks are you laughing? Karen. I ask because uh, my mother, dead serious, her name is Karen. My mom's name, true story, Karen. Too good to be true. <laughs> it's so funny. She doesn't keep up with like social media, all that. She calls me out of the blue last year. I don't know where she's like, Trey, I, got, I have a question. Trey, how come every time I go through the Chick-fil-A drive-thru, they ask the name for the order and they laugh at me. Why are they laughing? I was like, mom, okay, it's a long story. She's like, no, because if they keep laughing, I'm gonna ask to speak to their manager. I'm gonna tell them that I was like, don't do, don't do that. Don't. Mom. Don't do that. No, I, I'd explain it to her, my mother, she's the best. I'd explain it to her, you know, it's this whole thing. Your name is Karen, but you're not a Karen, you know. <laughs> and Karen's this whole like meme thing, where it's, it's often like this middle-aged white woman who's like bossing people around, getting in people's business, telling them what to do. Like, so you're, well, you were Karen to me, actually, my whole life, but <laughs> not to strangers. <laughs> so it's all good, you know. <laughs> yeah, another Karen up there, nice. So. My mother's the best, I'm very close to her. She's like the inspiration for all the videos and stuff. She's hilarious, yeah, she's, yeah, it's great. She's the best. She's like a classic Midwest mom. She loves reality shows, you know, like Dancing with the Stars and The Bachelor. Any Bachelor fans in that? Yeah. Ooh, I think she applied, very excited. The Bachelor. She got me hooked on the show, man. Reality dating show, they take one guy, he dates 30 women in a mansion all at once. It's like, Hugh Hefter, but more legal. I don't know. <laughs> it's good television. 20 plus seasons they've been doing The Bachelor, one of the top shows out there. But recently, it's come under some controversy. Did y'all see this? You see the headlines? Yeah, yeah, they say, hey, The Bachelor is great, but we need more diversity on the show. We need more people of color on the program. You know, I'm all for inclusivity. I'm sure we all are, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But do you ever wonder with certain things if maybe the black community is like, white people, you just do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a weird white people show. <laughs> like, yes, they should be included, but do they want to be included in everything white people are doing? We're like, come on, black people, do the Cupid shuffle with us, come on. <laughs> No. Y'all notice how white people need step-by-step -step instructions in their songs? It's a lot of them. Hands on your knees. Hands on your knees. Cha-cha, real smooth. I don't think they want to be a part of that. Uh, Think about it. all the viral dance craces, all of them, all the TikTok trends. Black people made them all up. They can all do them. They all have rhythm. They're over there just killing it. And we're like, wait, wait, slow that down for me. How are you doing that? Am I doing it? Or... <laughs> Let's just go axe throwing, Dalton. I don't know. <laughs> axe throwing, very white people activity. Very. Have you all noticed how white folks are just making up new activities ever since black people kind of took over the good sports? <laughs> uh, 
there's not a lot of black guys playing spike ball, whatever that is. It's a change, man. You take the game of basketball, for example. The game of basketball was invented in the late 1800s by an old white guy, where at its origins, you granny shot it into a peach basket. <laughs> and now you have seven foot black men windmill dunking from the free throw line. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's just throw a bean bag and a hole in a piece of wood. Let's just. <laughs> Basketball is my favorite sport. So that's why I grew up playing. I mean, I played it a lot. I got pretty good at basketball. I got to the point where I kind of graduated from my church league. And kind of, <laughs> yeah, I was crossing up Andy, but things were different when I met DeAndre in the paint. Yeah. <laughs> why aren't we praying before tip off anymore? <laughs> but your name, sa your name says a lot about you, right? You know, whether we like it or not. Your name paints a picture oftentimes. Like, you're picturing a certain kid when I say those names, Andy, DeAndre. Take my name, for example, Trey. Goes both ways, goes both ways. But there's a big difference, there's a big difference. Let me explain. Uh, any black Trey I knew growing up, it was often, it was short for uh, like Trayvon or Devon Trey, something like that. My name is short for Thomas Nolan Kennedy the third. <laughs> Big difference. Big difference. But I'm proud of I'm very proud of that name. I am a uh, family name passed down from generations. A lot of meaning behind that name. I think a lot of a lot of folks these days with their name and their kids, they're just making stuff up. You know, like I was on Facebook like a month ago, someone posted a baby announced, baby number four has arrived. We're done after him, so that's why we named him Lastin. <laughs> what? what? That's what, that's what people are doing. They're trying to like justify why they named their kid a name that's just not a name at all. <laughs> They try to justify it. They're like, he proposed by the river on my dad's farm. So we'd love to introduce the world to Tributary. Tributary? <laughs> tributary? That's the weakest of all the water channels. Why would you even do that? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's, my, that's my issue with this. I, I, don't, I don't think parents are setting their kids up for success when they name them this crazy stuff. This kid's gotta go their whole life with this name, you know, make friends, get jobs, careers. I know this real life couple, um, they had a little girl named her Ember, with an E, Ember. They're like, because our first kiss was by a bonfire, no one cares. <laughs> Ember, Ember, what's that poor girl gonna deal with her entire life? She's gonna get mistaken for Amber, exactly. What's Ember gonna do for a living? Amber is a hairdresser name. <laughs> Ember? Undresser name, stripper. <laughs> it's a stripper name. Come see Ember live. It's lit. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. <laughs> I bet a lot of you have all seen this. Uh, little girl's name, Nevea. You all seen this? Nevea. The trick is, the trick is, it's heaven spelled backwards. Nevea. I don't think parents are thinking. <laughs> I don't. First of all, I would not want my name to be heaven, but going the other way. <laughs> like, this is little Nevea. It's like heaven, but the opposite. Demon baby. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Second of, all, second of all, you know the parents think this. Just because you name your daughter something about heaven backwards doesn't mean she'll be an angel. It doesn't. Okay. I have proof. I have proof. I dated a girl named Natasha growing up. 
and she could not have been nicer. And just think of what Natasha spells backwards. Ah, oh, Satan. <laughs> she was really nice. Half of you can't figure out the joke. <laughs> But the baby, naming the babies, that was phase one. That was, we've escalated now. We've escalated it to uh, what we nicknamed the grandparents. Yeah, those, those have to be unique now, one of a kind. Can't just be grandma and grandpa anymore, can it? Yay, we're going over to Nunu -Nu and Boopy's house. I'd love to introduce you. This is my mama and my mama. What are you saying? Are those even words anymore? They're the sounds. This is my mama and my hero. And it's, all, it's always the same horrible excuse. The same excuse for how the kid got the name. They got the same horrible excuse. They'd be like, well, Trey, Trey, when you were really little, we tried to get you to say, Grandma, and you went, geek boop. So now it's geek boop. <laughs> That's why it's geek boop, yeah. <laughs> you could have walked me through it for a few weeks. I would have figured it out. <laughs> I only get one shot at it. I can say grandma now, you hear me saying it. <laughs> you know what it's like being a full grown man? Like, hey, gay boop. It's humiliating. It is. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, but, you know, I can't, I can't judge too much. I can't judge too much all this family stuff, naming kids, grandparents. Katie and I haven't started having kids yet. I can't imagine what it's like trying to you know, like raise kids, like disciplined kids this day and age. They say in a lot of places, spanking's kind of a dying art. My parents were senseis of the arts. They, I don't think I have butt cheeks anymore, just two big calluses. Yeah. Man, I, it was different times. I grew up in the South in the 90s. Not, not only did my parents spank me, but they went to a class provided by our church <laughs> that trained them how to beat me. <laughs> your, your guess is as good as mine what they teach in a Jesus whooping class. <laughs> like Jesus and his promises, remember always follow through. <laughs> then turn the other cheek, turn the other cheek. No, I needed that. I was, I, I had great parents. I was very lucky. I needed it. I think I turned out better for it. Bad kid, you know, I needed it. Uh, a lot of these kids run around these days. I don't know what they need. They say, they say it's the first ever generation to be born and raised on the screens, right? Born and raised on the, on the tablets, the Wi-Fi. The experts say, we're studying this, but it's too early to determine if there's any adverse effects of this yet. It's like, have you opened your eyes? <laughs> Everywhere you turn, there's a nine-year-old going. <laughs> what is it doing? What is it doing? Pick your boogers like a normal kid, you freak! The power of Christ can pass you! You can't go anywhere. I was out to dinner like a month ago, a kid staring at me going. Are you gonna spank him or do I need to? It's enough whip and nay nay. Whip your baby. Get him out of my face. Cause you know, maybe, maybe y'all, maybe. 
Maybe it's not all the kids' fault. Maybe I'm too harsh. Maybe it's our generation's fault. You know, a lot of us are, we're celebrating these kids before they even get out of the womb. So this last song goes out to that. Nobody cares, Tara. <laughs> Chicago, thank you! Thank you so much! Wow, thank y'all. You've been amazing. Seriously. It means the world to me. Thank you. So, I'm here with my man, Jake. Hi! Oh, that, that was nice. And with a pal here, we're working on primarily the live show, so don't tell anybody, okay? We're on the D-Lo. Also, especially if it's bad, don't tell anyone. No, it'll be great, it'll be great. Um, so we are out here in the middle of nowhere, just a creative retreat. It's not a bearded ski, it's called a So good before that. <laughs> you really went, you went for it, dude. Jeez, you went for it. Everybody runs for the hills. What happened? It's out here where the beautiful ideas come to me, like making fun of moms. <clears throat> but nature's beautiful. Shut up! Shut up! I hate birds.